This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You guys have some very keen eyes. In my Galaxy Tab S9 review, y'all noticed when I was drawing with a streamlined drawing app, and is that the Clip Studio Paint logo in the corner? What? Yes, observant viewers, you nailed it. That is Clip Studio Paint's new simple mode, and I really like it. Hello, my name is Brad, I review tech for creative professionals, and this is definitely worth a video. This is something that takes Clip Studio, which was a desktop app, which originally started like with the fully featured palettes along the side and details and, and lots of interface elements. And they took all of that and they ported it over to the iPad several years ago. And then a few years after that, they ported it over to Android. And Clip Studio Paint is one of the best drawing apps on any platform. So to have it across all of these different platforms, including cell phones is really cool. But of course, when you take all of those interface elements that were originally designed for a big screen desktop computer and start pushing them down onto a tablet, pushing them down onto a phone, it gets really, I guess, bunched up and it takes up a lot of screen real estate. And on the phones, they've streamlined it a little bit here and there, but this new simple mode aims to streamline it even more. Now, this did launch back in June, but this is the first time I've really had the chance to sit down and sink my teeth into it and play with it. And uh, you know, I'm really enjoying it. So I have it right here. I'm using the Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra. Um, so I have a ton of screen real estate with this like simpler interface. And I have these three dots up here in the corner. If I tap that, I can go here and say, switch to studio mode. And it's gonna give me the option. I can say, yeah, go ahead and switch to studio mode. And now I'm back to where I originally started. So you can kind of jump between those two options. If I want to get to simple mode, all I have to do is hit the Clip Studio icon in the upper left and then go over here to switch to simple mode and then boom it just brings me right back so up here in the upper left hand corner if you tap on that it's just going to take you back to your file picker and then i could always say return to clip studio this little image next to it that's a little save icon so if you want to save your drawing you could do that and then along the left hand side we have brushes, erasers, the move tool. And if you tap on any of those, it's gonna bring up your options. So you have a bunch of brushes here. Now, one thing you're gonna notice is if you're really familiar with Clip Studio is not every brush is available here in simple mode by default. That doesn't mean it can't be, however. For example, if we hit this little plus button up here, uh, we could duplicate brushes, we can import from studio mode, we could search for new brushes on the internet. Uh, if I go ahead and hit import, now I can go to the brushes that I already have loaded up in the studio. So if there's any brushes here that I don't need, I can go ahead and add those in. I'm gonna just, just cancel out of that. And it's already categorized these things, you know, pen, pencil, brush and of course the eraser is the eraser but it works the same way you can tap on it and you can get different eraser textures and use those as brushes as well we have a move tool we have a select tool now when you select any of these tools you have some options down at the bottom so for example his little uh, soul patch here I drew that up a little too high so I'm just going to go ahead and select that make sure I'm on the correct layer grab my move tool and now I could just move this down a little bit to where it looks good. You also see down here, there's some options. So I could do things like I, I can flip it and that sort of thing. You're gonna find that with all of these tools that even though this is simple mode, it looks simple at first when you kind of jump into the tool, it's gonna give you some options as you start to use it. This video was made possible by Squarespace who is the sponsor of today's video. I've been using Squarespace as a portfolio for a while, but over the last few weeks, I've been moving more and more stuff over to that because of their new templating engine. Now I can create pages where I rank my favorite drawing tech or I can create pages where I can list out more information about my online courses. Starting with a best in class, website template, you can customize every design detail and reimagine it with their drag and drop technology for desktop or on mobile. You can upload, organize, access all of your content from one place using Squarespace's asset library. You're able to manage all your files from a central hub and use them across the entire Squarespace platform. And then there's Squarespace's analytics where you can use those insights to grow your business and you can learn where your site visits and sales are coming from, analyze which channels are most effective, improve your website and build marketing strategies based on your top keywords or most popular products and content. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to get started, go to squarespace.com slash Brad Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. It also has the paint bucket tool. I'm gonna make sure I'm on my own layer and then I'm just gonna start drawing in some shapes uh, and I'm gonna seal in those shapes. Nothing fancy, just playing with the paint bucket. 
And then like anything, I can grab the paint bucket and I can fill it in. And what we have here along the bottom are some options. So you could turn on closed gap. So if you have a tiny gap and you don't want paint to leak out of it, it's gonna automatically close that for you. There's some settings that you can pull open and play with that too. That's not that exciting, but what I think is cool is let me go ahead and create a new layer underneath those outlines that I just made. And then I'm just gonna grab a different color. I'm gonna tap on that paint bucket again. And you're gonna see this over here on the left. One thing it has that I love is this. This is refer all layers. Now I noticed that's on by default. What that's going to do is it's going to allow me to look at the line art on any layer in my composition. And then on a different layer, I can just paint in my shapes. And you can see over here on the right hand side, that's on its own layer. So I could change the opacity of just that color layer. So it's still gonna let you keep those separate. What I think is interesting about this simple mode is that it's actually more streamlined than using Clip Studio itself. Reference layers have been in Clip Studio for years and years and years, they're great. It's more granular, you can do more, but they've taken some of the most important things that, that at least I use on a regular basis, and they brought them over here and they've simplified them. Now there's a lot that's not in here. I mentioned like the granularity of some of the tools like the paint bucket tool, but also things like animation. You're not gonna find animation in simple mode. Uh, you're not gonna find some of your adjustments here in simple mode. The, the comic frame maker isn't here in simple mode. There are some things, if I tap on this icon here in the upper right hand corner, for example, I can bring in materials, I can bring in a 3D model and place it on the canvas. So I was kind of surprised how they managed to find ways to get some of the little elements and things like that you're used to in Clip Studio here in this mode as well. My general take on this is if you're a huge fan of Clip Studio and you've been using it for years and you already have a workflow set up, there's probably gonna be times when you're using this that you're going to have to jump back to studio mode to do things and find some of those settings that you're so used to. Uh, for newcomers to the app, uh, especially if you're like on Android or iOS or something like that, I think what you're gonna find is this is gonna have almost every single thing you need. I also noticed when I tried to import a Photoshop file into Clip Studio the other day, it threw an error at me and said, hey, we can't open this in simple mode. Do you wanna jump over to Studio? And I said, yes, took me to Studio and opened the Photoshop file just fine. And so that was one thing I did notice. And, and you'll probably notice too, if you have older drawings and you try to open them up, if it's not supported in simple mode, it might kick you back to Studio anyway. One thing worth noting is this is only available on iOS and on Android, it's not on a PC or Mac, any kind of desktop computer yet. And at first that might not seem like a big deal. Like, well, I don't need it on a desktop. I have a big screen. But I kind of wish it was there. In a lot of my reviews, you'll see me use Adobe Fresco, like if I'm using a Surface product or a touchscreen device, something where I'm drawing that has that touchscreen that allows me to pinch and zoom or use two fingers to undo, something that uh, Clip Studio actually does pretty well on the desktop. Having those extra touch gestures are really nice. It would be really nice to actually have this on the desktop as well to use in those instances. This is probably something that only I want, but it would be cool to see them carry it over at some point. So if you want to use this mode, what do you have to do? Well, there's there's some good and bad to this. Uh, first of all, this is a 2.1 release. Uh, so you have to be a subscriber to Clip Studio in order to use it. Now, in order to use Clip Studio uh, on iOS and on Android, you have to be a subscriber anyway. So that might not really be a big deal. Um, but if this does come to desktop at some time in the future before the 3.0 release and you have that old perpetual license or the 2.0 perpetual license, you probably won't have access to this. What about the phone? What does it look like on the phone? I was actually watching somebody use it on a video. I didn't install it on my phone because I got this warning. It says, if you activate your license on this device, it'll unactivate your other device, which is fine. I'm okay with logging into the other one. What scared me is like uh, over here, it says, there is a limited number of times you can transfer license across devices. And if you're using two devices like a phone and a tablet, I don't know what that means. You know, if, if I do this five or six times, um, is it gonna cancel my license that I'm paying for? I don't know. Uh, it's it's a little bit confusing and a little bit vague. Um, I'm, I'm gonna try to actually reach out to Clip Studio soon and, and get some clarification on that um, because this is something I use on a lot of different devices. Um, but I was watching people use it on their phones and um, it looked pretty sweet. Uh, it looked like it worked really well there.